Hey everyone, Dr. David Clark. Let's talk about the perfect diet for Hashimoto's. Is it gluten-free? Is it paleo? Is it keto? Or is it none of the above? Okay, so let's talk about the perfect diet for Hashimoto's. So now, just so we're all on the same page, uh, Hashimoto's, of course, is an autoimmune thyroid disease uh, where your immune system targets the inside of your thyroid gland and starts attacking either or both thyroid peroxidase or thyroglobulin. And what ultimately happens in most people that develop these antibodies is uh, they ultimately develop uh, low levels of thyroid hormones like T4 and T3 because uh, if your immune system attacks thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin, then you can't make enough of them. And over time, uh, your levels of T4 and T3 drop on blood work. Your TSH will often go up. And then ultimately, you'll get diagnosed as hypothyroid. Now, interestingly and sadly, sometimes it'll t I think the average is about 7 to 10 years before uh, a person is finally diagnosed with Hashimoto's uh, correctly. And then, of course, all the questions begin about what can you do about it? Is there anything you can do about it? And unfortunately, if you ask most endocrinologists, they'll say, you know, whatever you eat has nothing to do with this. Just eat whatever you want and take your thyroid medication. And unfortunately, I'll tell you the research in my 20 years of experience says that's not the correct uh, attitude. Uh, there is something to do about it, and the foods you eat can definitely have an impact on your Hashimoto's, and that's why we're making this video called The Perfect Diet. Now, you may have heard, if you've done any kind of cursory uh, internet searching about uh, the AIP diet or uh, the paleo diet or uh, keto, and I'm sure people can give you different opinions about what's good about those. You know, and, and generally speaking, on their own, there's nothing really wrong with any of those as it relates to, you know, if you have Hashimoto's. However, there's some very specific considerations that none of those diets really seem to talk about, which I want to tell you because I think it's really, really important. I've seen it matter a lot to my patients over the last 20 years, and research backs it up as well. So the perfect diet for Hashimoto's is a diet that avoids foods that cross-react with thyroid peroxidase. Now, cross-reaction occurs when the antibodies, like, you know, the little post-it notes, you know, that your immune system makes, uh, when, it make, when you have Hashimoto's, you're making a lot of these antibodies for thyroid peroxidase and, and thyroglobulin, but we're going to talk about thyroid peroxidase. And these antibodies, not only do they stick onto thyroid peroxidase, and that's what directs your immune system cells to come in and blow them up, but these antibodies can also stick to things that are not your thyroid. And there are foods that we know have a very similar structure called molecular mimicry. Sometimes we call them epitopes. Bottom line is they look similar enough to your immune system that your immune system can go after them thinking it's going after thyroid peroxidase and vice versa. So what, we, what I'm saying is, and this is what the literature shows, is that eating foods that cross-react could make your Hashimoto's worse because to your immune system, they kind of look like thyroid peroxidase, which is the thing that your immune system is attacking if you have Hashimoto's. So eating these foods is very much, could be like throwing gasoline on a fire. So without further ado, what foods are we talking about? Well, I'll just give you a list and then we'll kind of go through each one of them. Or maybe I'll just give you the list right now. So the number one thing that we know cross-reacts with thyroid peroxidase is wheat. Uh, gluten, gliadin, all those are kind of the same name for, practically speaking, you shouldn't be eating wheat. Now, technically, you know, wheat is made up of different uh, little proteins and subfractions, which I've got lots of videos on that. But when we say, you know, gluten, that's really kind of a catch-all term for don't eat wheat, right? Now, thyroid peroxidase looks a lot like something in wheat called wheat germ agglutinin, and also looks like something in wheat called alpha gliadin 33 mer. Bottom line is you just you can't eat wheat that doesn't have those things in it. <laughs> so you just don't eat wheat because it looks a lot, and I mean a lot, like thyroid peroxidase. I've always told my patients if there's two foods that you're not going to eat, and like if you never see me again, here's the two foods you should not ever eat. Number one, wheat, barley, rye, because they're all basically the same thing. And number two on our list, uh, milk. Milk has proteins in it that look very similar to thyroid peroxidase. So the two worst offenders when it comes to... Uh, foods that Hashimoto's patients shouldn't be eaten. Therefore, the perfect diet would be avoiding those would be uh, wheat slash gluten and milk. Now remember, gluten is also found in barley and rye. So we're talking about wheat, barley, rye. And the number two would be milk. And I mean all milk products, butter, cheese, yogurt. It doesn't matter if it's raw or homogenized or pasteurized. Don't eat it, okay, if you're trying to have the perfect diet. Now the third thing 
uh, on this list, and this comes from the research again, is corn. Uh, corn is the big grain next to wheat that looks like thyroid peroxidase, and you should probably be avoiding it. Uh, the next thing after that we would is kidney bean. Now, kidney bean has something in it that's kind of a big word called phytohemagglutinin, and that in the kidney bean is what looks like thyroid peroxidase. Uh, the next thing we're talking about on our list of things to avoid of making the perfect diet would be uh, pea and lentil. Now, specifically from pea and lentil, there's this stuff called lectin, and so we're talking about pea lectin and lentil lectin. These are kind of things that all plants have. They are sometimes thought of as like the part of the plant's self-defense mechanism. The point is all plants have it. Some of them have it more than others, but particularly the lectins in pea and lentil look very similar or similar enough to thyroid peroxidase that you want to be avoiding that if you're trying to have the perfect diet for your Hashimoto's. Uh, the last two things are mushroom and cod, COD, the fish. Uh, those have protein, proteins in them, kind of protein sequences that mimic the molecular structure of thyroid peroxidase. So if we're going to summarize, again, you know, what's the perfect diet for Hashimoto's? Well, the perfect diet at least has to be avoiding those foods I just named, those eight foods, wheat, milk, corn, kidney bean, uh, pea lectin, lentil lectin, cod, and mushroom. Uh, those definitely have to be on the, uh, you know, the black, the, the uh, black box, the black list that you don't want to eat. Now, you could also do that, you know, avoiding those foods and do intermittent fasting or do uh, keto or do paleo. But my advice is don't DIY that because uh, one thing I learned a long time ago, and so I tell my patients is anything you read about, you know, this is good for everyone. Those rules generally don't apply when you have an autoimmune problem. You kind of have your own set of special rules. So before you launch in and design your own kind of diet, I, I would encourage you to work with someone uh, that understands what I've just explained and understands that even though you may have Hashimoto's, and I've just talked about the perfect diet, you know, for all Hashimoto's patients, what I mean is it's the starting point for the perfect diet for Hashimoto's patients. There's a lot of, you know, nuance in there, and you have your own individual metabolic situation, just like we all each have our own fingerprint, even though you have uh, the Hashimoto's label. Uh, you have your own immunophenotype, which is kind of like your own immune system fingerprint. And your diet should be part of an overall uh, treatment plan designed to fully address Hashimoto. So, yes, this is something you could put into action right now. But again, I encourage you to work with someone who understands the whole big picture because it can get kind of complicated. But for today, the perfect diet for Hashimoto's is the diet that at least is avoiding these things. And, you know, maybe it's got intermittent fasting on it. Maybe it's got keto. Maybe it's got paleo, depending on what else is going on with you. So I hope you find that useful and uh, I'll see you next time.